This was brought to you by Tux, Tips, Tricks, Reviews, Unboxed, on YouTube, and Hanson Mobile Advertising on Facebook. Killshaw effect. So we know that we can control the audience's eye through changing something on the screen, size, color, movement. Can all pull your viewer's eyes to a very specific part of the frame. Now we are going to go to the next step in learning about how we can shape an audience's reaction to your material. How to control the mind's eye. This is really the key to all of our storytelling. Along the way, you are going to be introduced to the term Killshaw effect. And this is going to help you understand just how changing something on screen can help your audience pay attention. And then I'm going to start talking about how this all applies to the art of editing. What I'd like to do is invent a very simple scene to edit in several different, different ways. A short and low budget scene, but the concepts here apply to any type of video. Two setups. But the main question for us is, can they tell the story that we need to tell? And in order to answer that question, we need to answer another one. What is the story? Let's look at a ground plan of those two shots. That could help us gradually build up emotion in the scene. But like I said, this is guerrilla filmmaking, and that means that we didn't have time to get all of those additional shots. But as countless filmmakers have found, you don't need a big budget to tell a good story. So we're going to edit three different versions of these two shots and compare our reactions. There are probably dozens of ways to cut these shots together, but for the purpose of this movie, let's just focus on three. The first version is a scene where the character walks into a room and sees something that the audience can't see. This is going to make us feel a certain way. How strong that feeling is will depend on the actor's performance. For a moment in time we're going to have the feeling of, oh my god, oh my god, and we're going to feel that way because, for a little bit, the character on the screen knows something that we, the audience, do not. There is a moment in time here where the audience is kept in suspense. Okay, great. Now let's try a second way. When the character walks into the room, and both the audience, and he sees the same thing. Now your reactions to this version is going to be different than your reactions to the first one. That's because in version 2 there is no point where the character knows something that we don't. Depending upon on how fast we cut back and forth to what the character sees, and we can vary that tremendously in the editing process. Okay, great. Let's do a third version. In this one, before the character even opens up the door we see what he sees before the character sees it. Then maybe we hear the sound of the door open, and then, and only then do we see the character already walking through the room. Now every single step that character takes is going to be informed by the fact that we the audience know, knows something that he doesn't, and that is going to make you feel different, right? So the real question is, which is the correct version? And since this is all about storytelling through editing, it's going to come as no surprise to any of you that the correct answer to that question is, it depends on the story you want to tell. Now before we figure that out, we need to know what the character is going through and what we want the audience to experience. If we want the audience to be scared from the moment he walks in the room, then we might choose the version where we see the briefcase first. If we want the audience to be surprised like the character, then, the first version is perhaps the best choice. The most important thing to understand, is that we had three different reactions, depending upon only one thing. How we arrange the footage. And that's editing. That's what editing is all about. So this leads to one basic idea, the Kilshav effect. Simply put, the Kilshav effect means that the impact of a shot 
is completely dependent upon the shot that came before it, and will indelibly affect the shot that comes right after it. The early filmmaking Russian pioneer Lev Kilshov experimented with cutting an impassive actor's face next to a person in a coffin, a bowl of soup, and an attractive woman. When he showed each of the three versions, he got three different reactions to what the actor must have been thinking. Of course the footage of the actor was the same each time. It is the relationship of the shots that created the meaning. The impact of a shot is completely changed when coupled with other shots. The Kilshav effect also applies to scenes and sequences so the emotional impact of a scene is going to be affected by the emotion you have at the end of the scene that came before it and it's going to impact how we feel about the scene that comes right after it. And the same goes for sequences of scenes. Now, this sounds pretty obvious, but it's amazing how easy it is to forget this when you're in the middle of shooting a scene or putting together a scene in the editing room. This was brought to you by Tuts, Tips, Tricks, Reviews, Unboxed on YouTube and Hanson Mobile Advertising on Facebook. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love you.